What does it feel like we've had more storms this month than we've ever had? Well, in this video, we're going to kind of take a look at why it kind of feels that way. We're going to compare it with the last 10 years or so. And I'm going to tell you why I think for some of you, the worst is still yet to come. And I'm going to show you guys with some statistics today, too. So let's start here. This is May 2024 preliminary reports. Almost 500 tornadoes, not quite 469 3,475 severe wind damage reports and about 1,600 reports of severe hail. If you look on the map, it looks pretty busy. Take a look at where we were last year, though. A different story with almost a severeless northeast with this lone tornado up here in the Maine. Other than that, that's about it. And really, pretty much all across these areas compare last year to this year, significantly different. And if you look at the last 10 years, we're almost tied for second place as far as tornado count goes through this date in the year, only really outdone by the huge outbreaks that we saw in 2011. And unfortunately, this year, we've already seen 23 deaths this month in May. For the year, we're at 36. So it's been a tragic May in many areas, but of course, not unheard of. We've had some really bad months. Look at March of 23, 47 deaths. And back in 21, a total of 103 with 89 of those happening in December. So clearly, weather is a danger and it can be deadly even during the winter months, especially across the south. Now take a look at these tornado probabilities. This map right here clearly highlights what we're thinking and what we typically see, right? As we head into April and May, we really start to see Tornado Alley light up with significant chances for tornadoes. And then as we head into May, toward the end of the month, that starts to shift north as our seasons change our tornado risk starts to lift up into the northern plains a little bit more as we move into august this risk starts to back down of course it's not zero and then we kind of get a spike right here toward the end of november as the seasons start to change and that goes into december here across what some know as dixie alley this is something i think is super interesting to look at these are the wind probabilities as far as severe wind goes Look how it really picks up here into early June across the east. One of the reasons that I believe this is is because a lot of times in June, especially, you'll get a big heat dome or a ring of fire and you'll get these storms that propagate up and over the high pressure area. And sometimes you get those long lived storms. Think about all the big storms we've seen in June in the past. We've had a huge derecho that moved once all the way up here from the Midwest down into West Virginia and Virginia. It's just that time of year where things set up like that. Now, as we move through the summer, we continue to see this risk. If anything, it stretches even further to the north and east and starting to settle down some across the plains. Not zero, but everything does start to back off as we head into September, at least as far as the wind goes. So do I think this is going to happen again this year? I mean, I showed you the maps. You, you never know. You go from this to this from year to year. All it takes is a bad pattern and you get bad storms. So what do I think will happen as we head into June? These are the European ensembles from today. Look at this ridge starting to build out to the west. And that could mean, again, storms drop in in those areas I showed you guys here in the east that potentially could see higher risk climatologically of those damaging windstorms. Looking at the long range European weeklies, also picking up on the idea of a big ridge across the west, your ring of fire, if you will. And that could, again, drive disturbances down from the northwest into the east. So I think, especially as we head into June, we get stormy and we could see more severe weather across the east, especially, I think, east of the Mississippi River. Is it set in stone? I don't think anything is in weather, right? Come on. But signs are pointing to this setup as we head into that first week and maybe even second week of June. And of course, we've got to look at the tropics over the next seven days or so. No tropical cyclone activity is expected. Sea surface temperatures are way above average, making it clear to see why NOAA is predicting an above normal hurricane season. I mean, they're talking about 17 to 25 named storms with an 85% chance of seeing above normal numbers. And four to seven of these could be major hurricanes. And one of the main reasons behind this is because we're seeing the El Nino weaken and La Nina start to take over. That weakens the winds around the tropics, meaning that the storms with these names will have a chance to grow. Unfortunately, that's what it's looking like as we head into the tropical season. All right. So if you're coming to the channel a lot, if you're finding me here on YouTube, do like the other folks have done and subscribe. I appreciate everyone who has done so. It absolutely helps the channel and you guys are making it grow. I do appreciate you guys doing that and you're supporting me here on YouTube. If it's your first time coming by, thanks for doing so. I'm Travis Roberts, a former TV chief meteorologist. I've been out of the television business for quite some time now, but I absolutely love forecasting and uh, it's, a, it's a passion of mine. And if it's a passion of yours, join the community. Let me know down below, though, what you're thinking about the severe season so far. 
and what you think we're looking at coming uh, over the next couple of months. I'll catch you next time. Have a great day wherever you are.